Hi, this is Frank Carmody. Today we're going to <clears throat> create a part file with a complex shape, and we're going to use constraints and dimensions to constrain and dimension the shape. <clears throat> so let's start out. We're going to go ahead and create a rectangle. Next, we're going to add a circle. Next, we're going to add an arc. Next, we're going to add a line. OK. And then let's go ahead and use the Trim tool to remove all of the excess lines. It's usually best when making a very complicated shape to get all of the lines that you're going to need on the drawing, even if they're not exactly how, it, how you'd like them to look or they're not dimensioned correctly. It's best just to get them all on there to begin with. The next thing we're going to do is do right-click Done to get out of our Trim tool. Right-click, Show All Constraints. Now, if it's a very complicated drawing you're working on, the best thing to do is just to remove all of the existing constraints. Uh, the reason this is is that some of the constraints you may not be aware of, they may interact oddly. So the best thing to do is just to start fresh. <clears throat> so let's start. We're going to start by dimensioning. So let's go ahead over. We start by dimensioning the circle. It's going to be 0.3 inches. Uh, we're going to go ahead and dimension this line. It's going to be one inch. Okay, we're going to go ahead and dimension. Notice here that we're going to dimension an angle. So this angle, we want it to be 120 degrees. So we click on one line, then the adjacent line. You saw that the, uh, the icon changed next to the cursor. So we click OK. Next, we're going to go ahead and dimension this angle. Okay, so in this case we're going to make it 145. Okay, uh, the next thing that we're going to do is dimension this line to be one inch. And finally we're going to dimension this line to be 0.5 inches. Okay, you can see that my dimensioning is going quite well. Nothing unexpected has happened, but my shape does look a bit odd. So let's go ahead and we are now going to add some constraints. So let's go ahead and we're going to, first we're going to make a couple of lines perpendicular. So these two lines are going to be perpendicular to each other. Right click, done. We're also going to make these two lines perpendicular to each other. Click done. We're going to make the top line horizontal. Okay, so that helped quite a bit. Right click done. Okay, uh, the last thing that we're going to do is go ahead and add a, a hole to this circle here. So we're going to create a circle, a circle, and we're going to dimension that circle to be 0.25 inches. And we're going to go ahead and make that concentric with the larger circle. Okay. We're also going to create a second hole inside of our shape. We're going to go ahead and dimension make this 0.5 inches. Okay. We're also going to make that concentric. With that. This time we're going to make it concentric with our arc. <clears throat> Okay, so there we have it. We've used dimensions and constraints to create a sketch. Uh, that probably wouldn't have turned out very well if we would have just created the sketch without removing all the constraints and without being aware of the constraints. So go ahead, it's now your turn. Uh, you're going to create a complex shape using constraints and dimensions. Good luck. When you're finished, go ahead and save. Okay, so I'm going to save this as Mr. Carmody underscore dimension and constraint. We click save, and we do want to replace it. Okay, when you're finished, go ahead and upload your work. Remember that you're going to need to dimension an angle, 
dimension a circle, dimension a straight line. Okay, you're also going to need to use a concentric constraint, parallel or not parallel, uh, perpendicular constraints, as well as the horizontal constraint. Good luck.